the job market is still tough in, in pockets around the country, and, and people need support, a little help, so they can look after their families while they're looking for a new job. So Congress should do the right thing and extend this vital lifeline for millions of Americans. Of course, that's just short term. Long term, the challenge of making sure everybody who works hard can get ahead in today's economy is so important that we can't wait for Congress to solve it. Where I can act on my own without Congress, I'm going to do so. And today I'm here to act, to, to, to help make Raleigh, Durham, and America a magnet for the good high-tech manufacturing jobs that a growing middle class requires and that is going to uh, continue to keep this country on the cutting edge. All right, folks, welcome back. There's our, uh, our leader. Uh, because, you know, what do you say about a man who day after day now, that's two days in a row, yesterday he was in North Carolina saying, I'm going to act without Congress. The day before, he said, I got a pen. Uh, last year it was, we can't wait for Congress. And he's doing it. He's doing it. Joining us now is our friend, uh, and it's good to see him, Governor Bob Ehrlich, the former governor of Maryland and the author of America, Hope for change. I got the light out of the book there, then you could see it. And Governor, welcome, sir. It's great to be on the show. Well, it's thanks great to, to great to have you. I know the book's doing real well. It is. It is. And thanks to my appearances on your show. Well, I uh, appreciate uh, that. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you have uh, most to do with it. All right, let, let's talk about this yeah. and, the, and this, you know, imperial presidency, whatever you want to call it. And and you know, this uh, uh, not Jeffrey Tubin, but um, um, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, legal scholar at uh, at George Washington University um, um, said that uh, this is what the founding fathers feared: a president like yeah. this who who. Not only that, but changes laws, picks laws, which he'll, he'll, he'll enforce. He just changed Obamacare yesterday, gave a, an exemption to, uh, I think, veterans or something, have, have another year or so. He just does whatever he wants. It's, J it's Jonathan ironic. Turley, by the way. Jonathan Turley. Jonathan yeah, Turley, go ahead. Sure. Uh, it's ironic that uh, this, I got the pen, I, we need all this stuff, all this rhetoric. It comes out the same week oral argument in the Supreme Court occurred with regard to his NLRB recess appointments. And it appears from the questioning from the justices that he will again lose in the courts because the framers also had this idea of separation of powers. And then this idea of the Constitution, <laughs> which you don't hear a lot about from the executive branch these days. But the bottom line is, almost every time this president has been challenged in the courts, he's lost. And I suspect with these recess appointments, we'll see the same thing again. And, of course, his approval rating, the latest Gallup poll out today, has him once again down uh, in the uh, 30s at 39 percent yeah. approval. Um, you know, so the American people understand this. And, I, you know, I just, I, I know they're plotting a strategy. I know he's going to populism uh, with, uh, you know, extend the unemployment benefits. Break and glass, always. It's, a, it's, it's the same stuff every right, time. Right, right. And, by the way, I have 10 bucks in my pocket. There's 10 bucks left after Maryland and federal government got through with me. <laughs> How much do you want to bet if it's not 99 weeks or 112 weeks or 132 weeks, 152 weeks, 180 weeks? The point I make in the book and the point that you discuss every day and what people have to understand is the Democratic left, the new progressives, this administration are about making unemployment benefits a new entitlement. It's not about an extension of weeks. It's about a new entitlement. It's forever. Same with regard to uh, SSDI uh, payments, same with regard to food stamps, same with regard to the budget. With regard to this mindset, this progressivism in charge of this country today, it's never enough, ever. And right. We need to understand that. All right. Well, you know, you, you've you've given advice uh, through through me and through the book to the Republican Party and how to move forward. And I, you know, I I, I will personally be disappointed. And, and we, it's a long time between now and then, 2014, if we don't take back the Senate or the Republicans don't take back the Senate. The but, but but let's talk about this because you know I, I, I think you and I have differing views on, on immigration reform. There's also a Gallup poll out today that just like the Pew uh, poll showed with Hispanic voters in 012. Um, immigration reform ranks way down the list of concerns and priorities. In fact, in this Gallup poll, only three, one, two, three percent of Americans put immigration reform as their top priority. So why on earth don't the Republicans understand that it's a lose, 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 lose issue for them with the base and even with the media? Because no matter how far they'll go, as we've discussed before, they'll still be portrayed as villains and bad guys towards the Hispanic community because they didn't go far enough on this issue or that issue. So why don't they just say no? Border security, yes. The rest of this, no. And 
energize that base. But you're arguing against yourself a little bit here because we know this imperial president will, as you saw, we saw with the DREAM Act, by the way, uh, last year prior to the election, he will act unilaterally. So we know it's broken. You know that, and I know that. So it's broken. Why not have a Republican proposal to fix it? Whether he signs it or not is a different matter. So substantively, you're paid as a member of Congress, and I was there for eight years, as you know, to fix things that are broken. Our immigration system is broken. Clearly, the border is broken. That's on substance. On politics, by the way, with regard to the Hispanic vote and the Asian vote, Mitt Romney got clobbered in both. Why? We had not moved. We had not at least put our proposal out there for these very important populations come election time. All right. Well, I agree with you that they. I thought you might. No, no. I agree that, and, and I maybe I, I did a poor job of expressing myself and explaining myself. I'm all for them passing something, yeah, yeah. but not something not that paving, is in line paving, with the right. Senate bill in piecemeal and give in to the you know the Chuck Schumers of the world who stands there and says, "I'm sure we're going to get it done in the House." You know, I don't want to hear that from Schumer and think that they they're capitulating to, to the radical left. We agree and we're right. Yeah. Just ask us, right? But no, no. I, I think we are on the same page. But so a. a a substantive bill that makes sense, that, that might compromise, but your point is don't cape. I got it, and I agree with you. Yeah, all right. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, Chris Christie. Um, uh, and, and, and before, the, before Bridgegate, um, did you think, I mean, your opinion uh, of him was what? Was he a front runner? Did he have a chance? Would you have supported him possibly? Uh, well, first of all, it's premature with regard to support, but he's a friend. I've known him for years. He has done a terrific job, and he got reelected at a big time margin in a very blue state, as we know, in a very uh, straightforward there. manner. So I, I voted for Barbara Buono at a protest. And I just think that the way he handled this, if he was telling the truth, which I believe he was telling the truth, I know Chris is a man of integrity, I believe he's going to come out of this to the positive. Okay. But Particularly vis-a-vis -vis the president, the Clintons of the world. Right. When you, Clinton, up, when you hold them up. When you hold them up and compare. It's leadership. It's transparency. Absolutely. It's, it's, this is me. And Chris, by the way, is all about that. This is me. Like me or not. Somebody screwed up. We fired him. We go forward. Okay. Now, if, if he could, you know, withstand all the onslaught of the uh, subpoenas Freaking and the testimony her, yes. and whatever. It's and, and of course, the media. Look at that. And you know this. And we've talked about this. And I talk about this ad nauseum. But the media, the coverage, the IRS... Uh, was just investigated by a woman uh, uh, for criminal uh, uh, conduct, possible cr cr criminal conduct on the part of the president or the administration or the IRS itself by a woman who twice gave $3,000 to the Obama campaign and gave money to the Democratic Party. That's who Eric Holder chose to investigate. And guess what? She's come up with nothing. Could, and, and the media... Half of them haven't even reported it. Can you imagine if Christie Benghazi. put someone in charge who contributed to his campaign to investigate this, they'd be calling for his head. I, you man. and I both know it's not an even playing field. Chris has to know this. My only complaint with the way he's, he's handled this whole situation was the two-hour press conference. He thought because of his force of personality, his call to personality, his transparency, his honesty, he thought he could defeat the beast. You and I both know he cannot defeat the beast in the short term. He's going to have to drink out of the fire hose, the subpoenas, all the bad hits, the negative poll numbers. They're going to be short-term phenomena. I believe, however, since he was honest, and I believe he was honest, and he's been transparent, and he said he screwed up, and the people, by the way, unlike Benghazi and the IRS and the federal government, the people who perpetrated this actually lost their jobs. Right. Uh, there's some degree of accountability here. I think he's going to come out ultimately yeah. ahead. And, 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 and by the way, the State Department uh, yesterday was blamed in the bipartisan Senate report uh, for not, uh, not, not, not answering the call for more security uh, from the ambassador and others. And has, has, have I heard one, re and this is my job, have I heard one report from somebody saying, well, now we better talk to Hillary again and let's go track her down and find out why those calls went unheeded now that the, the Senate Intelligence Report has said that the State Department was culpable. Not one word. All they care about is Christie, 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 Christie. But I think you're right. I think um, in the end, if he's telling the truth, uh, it will do him good. Governor, always a pleasure. The book, America, pleasure, Hope for Change. Read by, it. By the way, take that, Barack Obama. Hope <laughs> for Change uh, by Governor Robert Ehrlich, former governor of the state of Maryland. Great to meet Thank you, you sir. All right, when Thank we come you. back, folks, Ann Coulter will join us. Uh, we'll talk a little Ed Schultz, among other things. She issued a challenge to him. By the way, a challenge which we issued to uh, Ed Schultz's office weeks ago. And guess what? We never heard back either. On the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve Malzberg Show.